Hi, and welcome back to the House of the Stack YouTube channel. I was in the middle of working on the upcoming Dunkin' Egg video when suddenly the news arrived that George R.R. Martin posted a huge update on his Not a Blog. I immediately looked it up and it's probably the biggest update we've ever gotten. Seriously, it goes way beyond the winds of winter. George all but confirms the plans for a Westeros cinematic universe, or televisual universe I guess. In this video I will break his blog post down and give you guys my thoughts on what this could mean for the future of A Song of Ice and Fire. So let's jump right into it. It's been very quiet when it comes to the Winds of Winter. We hardly ever hear anything about George's progress, so this update really came out of nowhere for me. The last one we got was quite a while ago. It was his best one yet. He mentioned how 2020 was the best year he's ever had on the project. After that, silence. But it all makes so much more sense now. I'll focus on the most important parts. Let's break it down. Here's what George said. I look around and I don't know where 2021 went. I blinked and it was gone. It was a year best forgotten. I did however get a lot of work done in 2021. An enormous amount of work in truth. I seem to have an enormous number of projects. I know, I know, for many of you out there only one of those projects matters. I am sorry for you. They all matter to me. Yes, of course I'm still working on the winds of winter. I have stated that a hundred times in a hundred venues. Having to restate it endlessly is just wearisome. I made a lot of progress on winds in 2020 and less in 2021, but less is not none. Well, that's what I thought was going on to be honest. Given how ecstatic he was with his last update, the year-long silence was quite suspicious. Many people out there call George R. R. Martin lazy, but it's the exact opposite that interferes with the release of Wins. I previously made a video on all of his projects. George is very busy. In fact, most likely too busy. He can't say no. Add that to how complicated the story has gotten and you have a real problem. George also lost one of his best friends recently, which has taken a pretty heavy toll on him. While this is a frustrating situation that only seems to get worse and worse, I refuse to jump on a bandwagon here. Sure, I understand the frustration and I'm tired of waiting as well, but this series and the world George created just had way too much impact on my life for me to hate on the guy. Let's continue. The world of Westeros, the world of A Song of Ice and Fire is my number one priority and will remain so until the story is told. But Westeros has become bigger than the Winds of Winter or even A Song of Ice and Fire. In addition to Winds, I also need to deliver the second volume of Archmaester Gildane's history, Fire and Blood. Got a couple hundred pages of that one written, but there's still a long way to go. I need to write more of the Duncan Egg novellas, tell the rest of their stories, especially since there's a television series about them in development. There there's a lavish coffee table book coming later this year, an illustrated condensed version of Fire and Blood, done with Elio Garcia and Linda Antonson, and my Fever River director, Rhea Golden. And another book after that, a who's who in Westeros. And that's just the books. There you have it, George is working on multiple fronts in the world of A Song of Ice and Fire now. He previously stated that he would not work on any other book, any other show before finishing Winds of Winter. He was saying this about Fire and Blood Part 2 specifically and he stopped working on Game of Thrones after Season 4. Well, that seemed to change. This is big, this is huge, he did a complete 180 here and I can't help but feel this is for one thing and one thing only. The start of an A Song of Ice and Fire cinematic universe. It's his legacy. This world is his magnum opus and he wants to make sure it's here to stay forever. We're gonna talk about TV shows later so let's focus on all of these different books that will be released, even though it goes hand in hand with the shows. 
We've already known about the Illustrated Fire and Blood book. If I remember it correctly, it's gonna come out in July, which is probably right around the time House of the Dragon airs. This one and the Who's Who book shouldn't be too much of a distraction because it's pretty much just recycled work, copy and paste, but that he's working on Duncan Egg as well as Fire and Blood again really surprised me. I love Duncan Egg. These short stories feature some of his best work and a Fire and Blood part 2 will most likely open the door for the cinematic universe. It's a biased book, written through the perspective of a maester and therefore not to be taken as facts, but the featured characters are real and they will have to be established. Stuff like Summerhall will most likely not be fully spoiled until we get to read it through Duncan's POV and future novellas. But they most certainly need a bit more source material for them to be able to realize a full-on Duncan Egg prequel. Even though George is working on books, the attention seems to be drawn on TV shows. He's writing books that will be adapted. Here's what he said. There are also the successor shows. Those have taken a ton of my time and attention this year. I have seen some comments out there questioning how much I am involved in this new series. The answer is a lot, deeply, heavily involved in every one of these new shows. It's my world and while I have been working closely with some fantastic writers and showrunners, ultimately it's up to me to try to keep the canon, well, canonical and to do all I can to help make the new shows great. Another surprise, he's very involved in his shows. I believe that he's only going to offer some advice and do some outlining, but this makes it sound like he's really working on these shows, which is fantastic. It's been a while since George and HBO signed the contract for Game of Thrones spin-off shows, but I imagine that, at least to a certain degree, creative control was one of George's conditions. I mean, just look at what happened to George Lucas. Let's just soccer balls, a robot, a hairdryer. Let's just let's put a dildo in there. Why not? Because you know what? We're just f***ing my saga right in the ass. That's what this is. Merry Christmas. You know what that sound is? That's the sound of a thousand executives just taking a sh on my work. <sighs> Let's not talk about that one. So what shows can we expect? Let's hear it from George. We are developing live action shows for HBO and animated shows for HBO Max. No, can't tell you how many. But it is my hope that a number of these shows will get on the air. Not all, no. It is never all, but more than one. I certainly hope so. Some of the ideas we are working on are quite different in tone and approach than what has gone before, and that thrills me. The world of Westeros and Essos etc. is huge and there is room in it for many types of stories about a wide range of characters. What can I tell you? Well, let's see. Bruno Heller, the creator and showrunner of Rome, is writing his pilot script for the Corlys Velaryon series. That one started out as Nine Voyages, but now we're calling it The Sea Snake since we wanted to avoid having two shows with numbers in the title. The other one is Ten Thousand Ships the Nymeria series. Amanda Siegel, our showrunner, has delivered a couple of drafts for that one and we are forging ahead. The third of the live action shows is the Duncan X series. <laughs> Helmed by Steve Conrad. My team and I have had some great sessions with Steve and his team and we really hit it off. He's determined to do a faithful adaptation of the stories, which is exactly what I want. These characters and stories are very precious to me. Contrary to what you may have read online, the show will not be called Duncan Egg, which could be mistaken for a sitcom by viewers unfamiliar with these stories. We're leaning toward A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms for the series title, though the Hedge Knight has its partisans as well. Over on the animated side, well, I'm not allowed to talk about most of what's happening except art that I'm seeing. And wait, come to think of it, the news leaked several months ago that one of the animated shows would be set in Yeeti. That's true, our working title is The Golden Empire and we have a great young writer on that one too. And I think the art and animation is just going to be beautiful. I would tell you more if I could. I don't think I can say a word about the other animated shows. Not yet. So, there's lots going on. Well, that's a lot. I'm probably going to do a separate video and look at how a Westeros cinematic universe could work. Subscribe so you won't miss that one. Let's break it down. First of all, all of these shows depend on House of the Dragon's success. 
If that flops, the cinematic universe is dead before it even started. It looks very promising so far, but we will have to wait and see. What I love about these live action shows George mentioned is the insane amount of world building that is possible. Coralis Villarion has been almost all around the planet. The stuff we could see will always be refreshing and we could see places we've always dreamed about on screen. This of course depends on how the audience responds to the character of Corliss in House of the Dragon. George is a big fan of HBO's Rome however, so Bruno Heller helming the show already makes it a very big contender. Then we have 10,000 ships, which sounds kinda silly. Change it up. Like, now. Nymeria is badass, surely you can do better. Shout out to one of my favorite YouTubers, Preston Jacobs here. He said that this would be a show for the hardcores, and he's right. I would love it for the simple fact that it could retcon all of Game of Thrones' Dorn storyline. And we wouldn't have to waste unbearable amounts of screen time in these water gardens. You want a good girl, but you need a bad pussy. I would love to see this story on the screen one day, but if I could choose, it'll always be Duncan Egg. I just can't praise these novellas enough. It's just a beautiful story. As I've said in the beginning, I was in the middle of working on a Duncan Egg video, so this just comes in handy. Yes, the stories are not finished, but we have an ending. Summer Hall, and that mystery alone places the show on my number one spot. More on that next week when the video will come out. One thing that no one seems to talk about is the absence of the Roberts Rebellion show that was rumored to be in development. It would be a perfect little miniseries, although we already know most of the events that occur. I understand HBO for not doing it, however. It makes total sense to go for shows that allow this franchise to do something new and introduce the audience to corners of this world we haven't seen yet. If this cinematic universe works, I'd be shocked if we never get to see Roberts Rebellion on screen. But there's work to be done first. They just need to do it right and let a few years pass. About the animated shows, I'm not that big a fan of animated stuff. It's a great idea to do animated shows though. This spares some budget and there's a big market for that and I'm happy for the people who enjoy stuff like that. The fact that they're developing one for E.T. leads me to believe this will be very close to Japanese anime shows. It also leaves more than enough room open for originality because, well, we know almost nothing about that part of George's world. Could be a big risk high reward kind of scenario. At the end of his blog post, George talks about the other TV shows he helps developing outside of Westeros and assures us that yes, he is still working on The Winds of Winter. I made a whole video about those other TV shows, so I won't go over them again. Anyways, let's wrap it all up. This update is both very bad and very good. Don't get me wrong, I would love to have Winds of Winter above anything else, but even if we get it, do we really think we're ever going to get a dream of spring? If we never get a dream of spring, wouldn't it be better to have a full-on cinematic universe with several shows that take us on a journey through each and every corner of the Seven Kingdoms? I gotta be honest, and I can only speak for myself, but I would take Duncan Egg and these shows over Winds of Winter and nothing. But that's just me. What do you think? Leave it down below in the comment section of this post so we can have a discussion. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe for more future content about anything A Song of Ice and Fire. Take care and see us later.